friends, this is Christopher Davis Shannon, and today I'm going to show you how to play the 1929 Fats Waller and Andy Razoff song, Honeysuckle Rose. This is a very important song in the jazz lexicon, but it also contains three of the most commonly used chord progressions. So by learning this song, you're actually learning large chunks of a host of other tunes. What we're going to do in this video is start off with a little play along with the chords and lyrics. And I'm gonna break down all of the chords for the A and B section for you, as well as an introduction chord melody solo. And then at the very end of this, I'm gonna show you how I actually play this song. So like, subscribe, comment, do all those things that makes YouTube happy. Let's get started. Every honeybee fills with jealousy when they see you out with me. I don't blame them, goodness knows, my honeysuckle rose. When you're passing by, the flowers droop inside, and I know the reason why you're much sweeter, goodness knows, my honeysuckle rose. You just have to touch my cup now, yo, my sugar. It's sweet when you stir it up, well, when I'm taking sips from your tasty lips. And I know your honey feather drips, your confection, goodness knows, my honey sucker rolls. Honeysuckle Rose is arranged in a very common A-A-B-A -A -A format, meaning that the first eight bars of this actually repeat three times throughout the entire tune. So before we dive into the chords here, let's just listen to that A section, just the first one. It goes a little bit something like this. Two, three, four. Every honeybee fills with jealousy When they see you out with me I don't blame them, goodness knows my honeysuckle rose. So before we dive into the chords here, let's get our starting vocal note. That's always very important. If we're not starting on the right note, we're not setting ourselves up for success. So our first starting melody note is the C on the third fret of our A string. That's our first lick. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction to this video, this song contains all these very commonly used chord progressions, and it starts off with what we call our 2-5-1 progression, probably the most used progression in jazz music. Now, we're in the key of F, so what does 2-5-1 mean? It means that we're using the second chord in the key and the dominance chord, or the fifth chord, and we could just count up to do that. So we're in the key of F, that's our one chord. So therefore our two chord is some type of G and our two chord is always going to be a minor seventh. So we're going to play a G minor seventh. And then after that, we're going to go to our five chord. So we just count up again, F, G, A, B, C. And that's always going to be a dominant chord or a regular old seventh chord. So we're gonna go back and forth between these two chords four times, and they're each going to be two beats a piece. The first four bars of this is just gonna sound like this. Let's just try those first four together. It's not too bad, is it? One, two, three, four. And then C7th is telling us very strongly that it wants to resolve back to F, which is exactly where we're going to go. And this is where we get our second commonly used chord progression. This is our one, six, two, five, resolving back to one. This is also called many times the doo-wop chord progression. This is songs like Earth Angel and songs like Stand By Me. Sometimes we have a four chord instead of a two, but they're very, very similar to each other. So we're going to have our F, and then we're gonna just make this a D minor seventh all two beats a piece, and then we have our two five. G minor seven, 
C7. So we have... And that C7 again is resolving us right back to F. And then for our little turnaround here, we're going to have F to B flat seventh to F. And then we're gonna use an F sharp diminished seventh. And what this is doing is walking us chromatically back up to that G minor seventh that we start the A section on. There's our G right there. So we hear. Just gives us a nice smooth motion. So let's see if we can try just these first eight measures of honeysuckle rows together, starting on that G minor seven. One, two, three, four. Now to F, D minor seven, G minor seven, C seven, then F, turn around B flat seven, F sharp to major seventh and repeat. So that brings us up to the bridge. Now the bridge section of this is only four chords and it is so important that in most jazz circles if you're playing a tune and it has this bridge in it you just call out honeysuckle changes because that's what it is and that's what everyone knows this by and this is the bridge to probably a hundred other songs so what we're going to do is start on our one seventh chord and we're going to take our f and just make it an f seventh and we're going to strum that for two full measures and that F seventh is going to bring us to a B flat sixth chord, open two, one, one, again for two measures. And then we have our G seventh chord. So you note from that B flat sixth to a G seventh, just one note difference, which is making this B flat a B. And then we're gonna go up to a C seventh to round this out. And these are all gonna be eight beats or two measures of piece. So let's just listen to this bridge. It's gonna sound like this. So this isn't so bad, is it? Let's try this bridge together. One, two, three, four. And some people like to stop on that C7. Now this is a very fun bridge, and as I said, very functional. It's used for a lot of tunes, but later in this video, we're gonna break down how to spice up this bridge a little bit. But for the moment, let's take care of our chord melody introduction. The melody to this tune actually fits very nicely on uke in the key of F, and most of these are chord tones. We just have some passing tones in here, including the first note. If you recall, we're starting out on a C in the melody, right here, but it's over top of a G minor seventh chord. It's not included in there, but we're gonna add this little note. It's essentially making it a G minor 11th for a second there. What we're going to do is we're gonna strum that, and then we're gonna just walk through the notes of our G minor seventh chord. We're gonna lift up our pinky and play the B flat on the first fret, and then our C string, that's a D right there, and then an F, which is already under our first finger, on the first fret of the E string, and then resolve it to a C seventh chord. We're actually not gonna play the seventh for a moment because our melody note is an A, which kind of clashes with that. So what we're gonna do is play five, four, three, open, playing this C sixth voicing. So let me just play this first bar for you. And we can just let that ring out. Feel free to add more rhythm to this if you want. I tried to keep this arrangement fairly bare bones so that you could have some fun with it. And then what do we do? Well, we repeat that measure again, exactly as we just played it. And what do we do? Oh, one more time. But now we're gonna move a little bit. After we hit this C6 there, now we are gonna make it a C7 like this. Keeping that A in the treble voice because that's still our melody note, we're just moving a little bit. So let's listen to that third measure. And then we're going to resolve to this G minor seventh, but the A is still in the melody, so we only need to partially voice this chord. 
and we're gonna strum through that, let it ring, and then we're gonna play all open. And it goes G, F, D. That's our little bit. That resolves us to the F major chord. So let's just listen to and try to play through these first four bars nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Now we change it up. And that brings us right to our F major chord. And what we're going to do is just walk through our one, six, two, five progression here. So we're gonna play the F on beat one, strum an F chord, and then a D minor seventh chord, and then G minor seventh. And then we're gonna repeat that C lick that we had with all the open strings. And resolve right back to F, then play our F again. But remember, it goes to a B flat chord here on the turnaround. We're gonna make this into a B flat nine by keeping that C up top on the third fret. So we'll hear this. Back to F. And then give us our F sharp diminished seventh chord to lead us into the head of the tune for that G minor seventh. So let's try this entire little chord melody intro together. One, two, three, four. tune. So now let's look at some more fun chord voicings that we can use for this song. So I want to take a little bit of time to break down how I would actually play this tune on a gig or at least a version of how I would play it. A lot of people say that what I teach on here is, is sometimes a little bit too simple but I really want these tunes to seem accessible to everyone and building up a new vocabulary of chords and rhythms just takes time. And in addition to that, I'm not gonna play it the same way each and every time I play this tune. But here are some of the chord voicings that I use throughout this. Let me just play the A section in kind of the style that I usually would so you can hear what this sounds like versus, well, everything we just did. Sound a little bit something like this. Every honeybee affairs with jealousy When they see you out with me I don't blame them, goodness knows My honey sucker rolls When you're passing by flowers droop inside And I know the reason why you're much sweeter Goodness knows My honey sucker rolls so you can see I'm not actually moving around too much, but I'm playing completely different voicings. And what I'm trying to do is find voicings that really complement the melody. So we mentioned earlier that the starting melody note of this is a C and we're playing a G minor seventh chord. Guess what? There's not a C in there. We can add it. But what I like to do, and just to keep the comping more minimal, is to play a G minor 11th, which is a fancy way of saying it's a G minor seventh, which is adding that C to it. So how can we do that? And I like to use this voicing in this context. Because then when I want to go down to a C7, I can use this bar chord on my third fret. And we have three common tones shared between these two chords. So all I have to do is take this one finger that's on an F on the fifth fret and move it on down to an E. And wow, that G minor 11th is now a C7. And we're also complementing the melody and integrating that into our chords. The other aspect of this is that I don't want to jump around on the neck all over the place. It's not just because, well, it's hard to move all my fingers at once, but also when we're thinking about comping and thinking about harmony, we want to keep these notes close to each other. We don't want to make big movements because I want people to focus on my voice or the soloist that I'm comping behind. This is just providing support to everything else that is going on. So you don't need to be too fancy about it. So you go back and forth between this G minor 11th and this C7. First four bars. Now in beat four of that last measure when we resolve back this C7th, I like to make this into a C sharp diminished seventh. So all you gotta do is put down your ring finger on the fourth fret of your A string, 
which gives us this chromatic leading tone getting us up to an F sixth chord. We were playing a regular old F before, and remember that sixth chords, seventh chords, all these things are based off of our main triads. You know, this F sixth chord has an F, A, and a C in it. We're just adding a D up top for a little color. That's all. Now you can remember that we played a D minor seventh next, but F sixth and D minor seventh are the same chord, just with a different bass note, same grouping of notes. So what I like to do is use an F diminished chord here on beat three of this measure, just to provide a little bit more movement within the chord. Walking me down to this G minor seventh voicing, which is finally leading me back to that C. And sometimes I'll make this a C9 by leaving that D. So let's listen to those two bars. And that just gets us back to F. And then I'm not gonna use the B flat seventh all the way down here, cause well, that's just too far. So we have one right here that we can use on the third fret. Then back to F. And then to resolve, you remember that we used an F sharp diminished seventh to walk us up to the G minor seventh. Well, in this context, we're just gonna use the F diminished again to walk us down to the G minor seventh. You can approach it from above or from below, it doesn't really matter. We just wanna have some movement in the chords to guide our ear to the next ones. So let's see if we can try just an A section of this together. It sounds a little bit something like this. Two, three, four. Every honeybee fills with jealousy. When they see you out with me, I don't blame them, goodness knows. My honeysuckle rose. And again, when you're passing by, flowers droop inside, and I know the reason why you're much sweeter, goodness knows, my honeysuckle rose. Now the bridge is where the real fun happens. We can bake a lot of this ascending melodic line into the chords that we are playing. So the main chords are going to remain the same, and if you were playing this with someone else who was playing chords, they could play those basic four chords, and all these passing tones over top would work out and sound just fine. So we're going to start on the F7. We need to establish where we're at. But we're going to do really two beats per chord now. So we're going to go F7, and then we're going to have this ascending lick. So it's going to go F7, C minor 7th, A flat diminished 7th, and then back to F 7th. I know that seems like a lot going on, but listen to it in context. Don't buy sugar. It really is just complementing the melody. We're taking those melody notes and adding them to the chords that we're playing as passing tones. So when we get to the B flat 6th chord, again, we're gonna establish it with B flat 6, but then we're gonna go right back to our F seventh chord to create this movement. We're gonna go just like the melody does. So we're gonna go B flat sixth, F seventh, then D flat diminished seventh. And note all these diminished seventh chords, they're all the same voicing. Just depends what fret we're slapping it down on. This one is three, four, three, four. But if you get this shape once, you have hundreds of chords at your disposal. And then this is going up to a B flat sixth chord. If you're astute, you'll notice that that's the same as the G minor 7th voicing that we just used at the end of the A section of the tune. So here's our second little lick with these ascending chord voicings in here. So you have B flat 6th, F 7th, D flat diminished 7th, B flat 6th. So you can hear that the chord is now going somewhere instead of just sitting in one place. So let's put these first four measures of the bridge section together. One, two, three, four. It's a little more fun than just a couple of chords, isn't it? So let's see what we can do with the rest of this. We go to a G seventh next, and we're gonna go G seventh for two beats, and then we're gonna go D minor seventh. So we go. And then a B flat diminished seventh, which you can see is really the same as the D flat diminished seventh by a different name. And that's gonna bring us up to G seventh, but we're gonna land on a different G seventh voice. We'll use this one right here. It's really the same as the F7 that you played earlier. So let's listen to this ascending lick. Not too shabby, huh? 
And then we get into this C7 chord. We're actually gonna start on a C9 chord. We'll leave that D right where it is. And go back to that G7 chord, much as we did above this. And then we're gonna play an E flat seventh chord, which is gonna go all the way up here. So again, same diminished seventh voicing, we're just moving it on up. So we have. And then our last chord here, I just wanna provide some more tension. And the reason for this is if I play a regular old C seventh, it says, hey, we're going back to F. But I want something really unstable that makes us feel as though we really have to move off that chord. No matter what, it doesn't matter where we go. And we know that we're going back to a G minor seventh. So what I do here is I actually play a C9 with a sharp five. So if you put down that C9 voicing we just played, we're just gonna put the ring finger right next to the G sharp on the fourth fret of our E string, giving us this sound. But then when it resolves down to that G minor seventh, we go, oh, that's nice. And it leads us right into there because we have a lot of tension. So let's listen to this entire bridge section, see if we can't play this together. There's a lot of chords in there. This might take you a little bit of time, but it's totally worth it. This is a fun little section of the tune. One, two, three, four. A lot of chords in here, a lot of movement, and a lot of fun. So I hope you've really enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions or you think of new chord voicings, please do drop them in the comments below. I always love hearing feedback from you all. If you've, if you've really enjoyed this, please do come over and join my Patreon community. We have lead sheets with both the simple chords as well as this harder version in case you're forgetting some of these voicings as well as that chord melody intro tabbed out. And well, we do things like this every single week along with live streams on Friday nights where we just teach things live or play tunes together wherever the heck we're feeling like. I'll see y'all over there.